That's that. Go call your mom. She's waiting on you. Sabbath peace. Yeah. And we'll text her. It's another opportunity for us to come together, come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained of grace, not of works. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. It is given freely to a, as a gift to all who obey him. You are that boy good. We understand if you do not obey him, it is made manifest and made obvious that you do not believe in this state. You should expect no good thing from the most high. However, anything that you do give, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. Y'all know where that's from? Y'all young. Y'all know where it can and it will. Y'all know where that phrase come from? That's good. And y'all age, y'all age. I knew exactly where that came from. Might have been said to me a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> that thing yeah, crazy, man, boy. You are under arrest. <laughs> yeah, buddy. That thing crazy. It can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. But that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints in the chat, to the saints watching on the camera, to the saints scattered afar off that we don't even know about, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live and recap. What we talked about last week, Zakai. Fire. What we talked about last week, Zahar. He said apple trees. And you know what I'm saying? When you come around, you got to grow trees. What else? Go ahead. No, go ahead. You grow trees. Ah, he said they grow for four years, three years, right? They go for three years, then in the fourth year, then who would who go to in the fourth year? You can't touch it in the three years, right? In the fourth year, who touch it? Who get it? That's it's close. Yeah, it go. It does. Actually, that's what the law say. It say it go to got to go to God. So anything that goes to God goes to the priest, right? No, nope. the next year, five, five years, that's when you can eat it. That's good though. That's good. Yeah, when you got a field, you gotta you gotta lead the edges. You know what I'm saying? Books say don't don't you glean the edges. You know what I'm saying? Good job. You know what I'm saying? That's our law. Our law is all about being generous to our people. All right. So we talked a little bit about that because Yahushua, he said, love thy neighbor as I said. That's not what he said last week, technically. But he said, What you want people to do to you, that's how you should treat people. Right. And he said, This is the law and the prophets. And when you hear that, if you a person who never heard about the gospel, never heard none of this stuff, and you believe our law, then you look at it, you've been like, whoa, 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 how can this man say that? It's because he taught as if he had authority, right? Not just as if he was learning. Somebody close the door for me. Not just as if he was learning or like, is he teaching something? He was teaching like, no, nah, I wrote this thing. You know what I'm saying? He was teaching like, no, nah, I make the rules, right? What I say goes is the way he was teaching. All right, so we talked a little bit about that. It was the last, we did a three-part series on um, Yahushua teaching as if he had authority, right? And so that was the end of the three-part series. So now you got to pick, you got to, we got to set the scene again, right? So he's up north. Remember, you got, you got northern Israel and you got southern Israel. I didn't put it on the map, but you got northern Israel and you got southern Israel. He was up north, right? And he was teaching all the people up north and you know, they crowded around him and he just he just teaching. Remember, he went but a couple of like maybe four weeks ago, we he jumped in the boat and he was teaching from outside the boat. And then they followed him from there and all that. So he's moving around and the people are just following him and they're in the, and the crowd is growing and growing and growing because he's teaching. And so he stopped and he just started teaching them. He taught them all the stuff that we've been talking about for the last three weeks. Right. So now we about to pick up from there and we're going to see where is he traveled to? Where do things develop from there? So let's go to. uh. Let's start. Let's start. Let's start with. Uh, we left off with Matthew, but let's go to Mark. Let's go to Mark chapter seven. It's Mark chapter seven, verse one.
Then came together unto him the Pharisees and certain other scribes which came from Jerusalem. Right. So now he's up north, but the Pharisees and the scribes that came from Jerusalem, they chasing them up north. Right. So they came to him from Jerusalem and they looking like because Jerusalem in the south. Remember that. So Jerusalem in the south and uh, uh, Capernaum and Nazareth and Galilee, all that is up north. So that's where he is up north. And the 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 uh, Pharisees, they came from the south to come talk to him. So look at look at what they they intentions are when they talking to him. Watch this. And when they saw some of his some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they washed their. What hands. I say? That's Mark seven. I I meant Luke seven. Sorry, Luke chapter seven, verse one. We're going to get to Mark 7 probably next week. We're going to get to uh, maybe next week. Maybe we got to go through John first. John, we got to do John 6. John 6 long. That thing like 70 some verses. You know what I'm saying? So that might take a whole Bible study by itself. So we might get to Mark in about two, two, two weeks. Y'all willing. Now, when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. In a certain right. So this is. This is right after he got done talking, right? So all that, all, everything that we read, you remember he's saying, blessed are the, the poor in heart. And I didn't come to, to, to destroy the law and the prophet. And he also said, oh, and you heard it say that, you know what I'm saying? If you even look on a woman, you, you looked on her with, uh, look on a woman, you committed adultery in your heart because you looked on her with lust, right? Then he keep going on. He said, this is what you need to do to be perfect. Then he go into the next chapter and he start telling you about, you know what I'm saying? This is how you should pray and don't have repetitious prayer. And all this stuff. Then he go into the next chapter and he talking about don't judge. You know what I'm saying? Judge not lest you be judged. Take it out your eye first until you, you know what I'm saying, you can measure it appropriately. And you know what I'm saying? And then he then he went on to, and, and talked to you about you got to go down the straight path. Right? If you don't go down the straight path, then he going to look at you and be like, nah, man, I never knew you. You know what I'm saying? You worker of iniquity. So all that, he spent three chapters and we spent three weeks talking about it. Then in verse 1 of chapter 7, it's like, okay, after he got done saying all these things, this is what he did. Watch this. When he ended his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion's servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. So a centurion servant. A centurion is somebody, it's, it's, like, a, it's like, a, like a Roman soldier, right? So think of it, the best way to put this, right? Think of it as... Think of it as uh, over a hundred, uh, over a hundred people. Yeah, but they got to understand like this, the police, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's yeah, like, the, so like the, the centurion is kind of like the police, the police in the hood, party. right? So you got a hood, you black is a black neighborhood. The police super racist in that neighborhood. And then this is one of the police, right? So think of like, you live in this place where everybody feel like the police is racist. Because every time the police always come in here, they locking people up for no reason. They setting you up. They planting drugs on you. They beating people. They always rough. They unfair. They be shooting black people. They be doing all types of stuff. So we, in, in this neighborhood, we kind of look at the police like, nah, you kind of, as the kids say, the ops. You know what I'm talking about? The kid, they kind of they kinda look at it. They kind of look at it like, now nah, you kind of the ops because you be killing my people, you be beating my people, and all this. And sometimes we don't be, sometimes we be doing something wrong, but sometimes we don't be doing nothing wrong. And all the time, whether we doing something wrong or not, what you be doing is too much. You know what I'm saying? When white folks do something wrong, you just talk to them, put some hands on their cuffs, or write them a ticket or something. When we get stopped for a traffic stop, y'all ready to pull out guns, ready to scare us, shoot us if we make the wrong move, all this stuff. So think of it like that, right? So you got this centurion who's like a cop, but he's like a chief of the cops. Like he's a over a hundred cops. He got a hundred cops at his at his disposal. This centurion has a servant, right? Also a cop, white cop, right? Yeah. That's kind of how these centurions was, right? This is the centurion servant. They of a different race. They white, right? And on top of that, they they kind of the ops. You know what I'm saying? Like you know what I'm saying? They don't really mess with us. They always mess with us. But maybe not this particular one, but we ain't got time to figure out which one is on our side because most of them are always killing us. Right. That's kind of how we would view a centurion. That's why this what we are re about to read is about to be special 
only because our people would view them as the enemy, right? Keep going. Now, when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard Yahushua, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. And when they so came now to this centurion servant, so this is a servant to the police, right? He reached out to the elders of our people, right? He looking like, man, look, man, it's getting rough out here. I need some help. You know what I'm saying? I heard about Yahushua. I heard he be healing people. He just tell him, help me out a little bit. Right? And he talked to the elders of our people. Now watch what the elders of our people say to Yahushua. Watch this. When they came to Yahushua, they besought him instantly saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. Right? So they say this man was worthy. So basically they convincing Yahushua like, nah, he ain't like the other ones. Now nah, he cool. So it's like the cops, the cops be shooting, but then you got that cool cop that come around get a kid some candy every now and again. They look out when the cops mess with him. He talks to his, his cop friends like, nah, man, nah, nah, not here. Nah, leave him alone. They all right. You know what I'm saying? I know them. It's good. He be trying to protect and help out. So this how this centurion servant was. So they looking at him like, nah, he good. He good. Trust me. Y'all sure. If you're going to heal a centurion, now I know we don't really mess with him like that. But if you're going to heal a centurion, this the one. He worthy. He worthy. He'll take, you know what I'm saying? He take care of our people. Watch. They say, watch this. For he loves our nation and he has built us a synagogue right so he loved our na nation and he built us a congregation like he built us an assembly he built us a place where we can all come together and read the word right and he loved our nation he loved our people right even if he is white or whatever race you know what I'm saying, this particular centurion was like he loves our people he not us but he loves our people so our people respected him right if you look at the history history of our people like People don't teach us our history. People don't teach us that we the people from the Bible, right? But you will notice that even now, our culture is the same. We separate ourselves from everybody else in everything we do, right? If you gangster and you come to the hood and somebody not gangster, what are we going to do? We're going to look at you and be like, man, you ain't from around here. You know what I'm saying? If you don't get your soft butt out of here, this, that, another. But if you love the people, right? I can show you videos right now of white boys with tats all on them from the hood. Right? Why? Because he loved the people. He get accepted in the same places where the next person it get turned away. That's how our people are. Our people are, we are accepting to anybody. We ain't never been the type of people that look at race and just based off of race solely, you get, you get disqualified. That's these white folks that taught people that. Right? That was never our mindset. Our mindset was never, oh, just because of how you look. No, it was always a because of how you what? You how you act. It's always our people. The root of our people is behavior. Right? It's behavior. That's why this stuff with Drake, right? That's what Kendrick is saying about Drake. Drake, Drake is half, Drake is black. So when he's saying not like us, he ain't saying you ain't black. Yes, he's black. His daddy black. His daddy from America. His daddy, you know what I'm saying? Like, he black. He's saying the way you behave don't line up with the way we behave. Right? That's why Kendrick, when he on stage and all that, he got Mexicans and white people on stage because it's not about that. It's about how you behave. It's about how you act. Right? And that's the way our people is. Hip hop all together movies any any source of entertainment or anything that that's that's from our culture that we brought up right it's all about how you behave if you behave correctly we accept you if you don't then we ain't messing with you right that's how we that's how we've always been and you can see it going all the way back to what we read now this is two thousand years ago right two thousand years ago where where we was wearing sandals Right? Wearing sandals and long tunics. Right? This is how we act still. It's all about how you behave. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Then Yahshua went with them, and when he was now not afar from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that you should enter in under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. But say a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I right? 
So they saying, oh, no, nah, he good. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you're going to help somebody out, help him. He good, right? He, they saying he's worthy. But look at what the centurion, the centurion servant said. He sent the message back to him. When he heard Yahushua was about to come to him, he sent the message like, no, 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 no. He's like, listen, 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 listen. I'm not worthy for you to come to me. You know what I'm saying? I like to believe like maybe his house was a little dirty or something. He ain't got time to clean it up. He got a lot of stuff going on. He's looking like, no, nah, I ain't worthy for you to come to me, bro. Listen, I, I purposely didn't come to you directly because I'm not worthy. The reason why I talked to the elders and had them talk to you, because I know I'm not worthy. If you are who you say you are, you have no business dealing with me. I'm a Gentile. But I still need your help. That is humility. That's real humility. Right? A lot of people have fake humility. Like everything you see nowadays when people be trying to act humble is fake humility. All this stuff is phony. But people be like, oh, well, you know, ah, oh, man, I, yeah, you did so good today. Oh, well, you know, I try. That's fake humility. Oh, man, it wasn't that good. That's fake humility. Right? Real humility is you acknowledge who you are and what you are, right? But you don't let nothing stop you from getting what you need. So you see him, he acknowledged like, listen, I know I'm a centurion. I know who I am, but I also know who you are. And I know your people don't generally mess with my people. And I know my people have done, done a whole bunch of stuff to your people. So I don't see myself as worthy as really messing with you. However, I'm not going to let that stop me from what I'm doing, from what I'm trying to get. I also need you to still heal somebody for me. So if you're going to do that and I don't feel worthy to be in your presence, tell you what, watch this. You on mute? No, I'm, uh, I'm here. All right. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word and my servant shall be healed. For right. I he said, say in a word. And my, he's talking to Yahushua through another person. He's saying, look, just say the word and my servant is going to be healed. So he understands enough about Yahushua's power to be like, you don't really have to come to me because I ain't worthy for you to be here. Just say it. Then watch how he relates it to his job. Watch this. Well, I also am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers. And I say unto one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. Right. He said, I personally have authority and I don't have to actually go. I can tell one of my soldiers to do it. And guess what? Because I have authority, he going to listen to me. So he's telling Yahushua, I believe you have authority over even sickness. And all you have to do is say sickness be gone and we going to be healed. Right. So he's talking to Yahushua in his own language, but relating to his power. Right. That shows belief. Watch what Yahushua say. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Yahushua heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. So Yahushua confirmed to the people, he said, listen, I'm going to tell y'all the truth. Ain't nobody got faith like this in Israel. Of our own people, people is not this faithful. Because you got to take what the man, he don't have no New Testament. He don't have no Bible. He don't have none of this stuff that we got, right? Only thing he know is these people, the elders, the people I mess with, say that this guy is the one. They say that he got power and that he been healing people. I ain't seen it with my own eyes yet, but they say it. And I take what they say. And if that is true, man, I don't even believe you need to come here. I've heard that you got a thought. I heard that you just talk and stuff happen. I believe you could do that from where you are without even coming to me. Just say it. Because I be having authority over certain stuff too. And I tell them, like, yo, 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 you take your butt over there and go clean up. Hey, yo, 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 you take your butt over there, you know what I'm saying? Go see what that guy doing over there, right? And they listen. They listen. So I believe if you got authority, like I've been hearing about, all you got to do is say it, you know what I'm saying? We'll be healed. Y'all sure heard that thing was like, whew, that's a bad boy. These boys ain't got faith like that around here. Watch what y'all sure did after that. And they that were sent returned to the house and found the servant whole that had been sick. And it came to pass. Servant, 
the centurion servant now is whole. He back to normal. Right? Just like just like the centurion believed it would happen. All right, keep going. And it came to pass the day after that he went into the city called Naim, and many of his disciples went with him, and much people. Now, when he came near nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much people of the city was with him. And when the mm -hmm. Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the and buyer, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. Mm -hmm. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us. And they said, What? It is people, a great prophet. So why are they saying that? Boy, they had arise, and my man walked, got up. God, God listened to him. They ain't seen nothing like that before. He just raised a person from the dead. How many people in our history have we seen do that or heard about doing that? Uh, Alicia. not zero now. Alicia, all right, we got two and Elijah, Alicia and Elijah. That's it. Uh, Alicia is a prophet, one of our prophets. That was in the times of some of our kings, King Ahab and King Jehoshaphat. Right? But those are the two prophets. So when they heard, right, the only other people that we've heard about doing this is Elijah and Elisha, two of the greatest prophets that we have documented in our book, right? Those are the only two people we've ever heard. And now Yahushua will do it. So naturally, their response is going to be what? Let's read it again. Verse, what is it, 16? Uh, 15. 15? It's verse 15. Watch what they say. And he that was this, dead. This is Luke up. chapter 7, verse 15. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us. That God right, so when they saw that, they say the only people that have done this is two great prophets. So if you did it, what does that make you? A great prophet. They said a great prophet. So they looked at Yahushua and was like, okay, he must be a great prophet because nobody, this is not normal. Nobody's ever done this. This is just something that we read about in the book of Kings, in the book of Chronicles. Right? We've never heard of no craziness like this in our life, but we just saw it with our own eyes. This is a great prophet. Keep going. Watch this. And the disciples of John showed him of all the thing, all these things. And John calling unto him, two of his disciples sent them to Yahushua saying, are you he that should come or should we look for another? Right. So John sent out to him this John the Baptist and John the Baptist looking like, is it you? Or should we wait for somebody else? Right. Is this you? Are you the one for real, for real? Or are we waiting for somebody else? Is All right, keep going. Ocean? When the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us unto thee, saying, Are thou he that should come, or look we for another? Mm -hmm. In that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Yahshua answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended of me, in me. So he sent a message to John and he quoted scripture. He did a couple things in front of the people, the people that came asking the question. Just to show them that these miracles has happened. Then he quoted a scripture and said, tell John about this scripture. Now, they probably don't realize that they they telling them a scripture. But he said he start quoting the scripture. And he said, take that back to John, knowing that when John hear that, John will be like, all right, that's it. I know what that scripture is talking about. It's talking about the Messiah. Right. Later on, John is going to die, but we're not going to get to that yet. Jump over to jump over to uh, Matthew ch chapter 12. Is Matthew chapter 12. Give me verse 22. Sorry, come over here and sit down. Put that phone down.
This is Matthew 12, chapter 22. Verse. I mean, uh, chapter 12, verse 22. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. Mm -hmm. And all the people were amazed and said. When they say blind and dumb, it just means that he couldn't see and he couldn't speak. Right? So then he healed him so that he could see and he could speak. Right? Keep going. And all the people were amazed and said, is this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said. The son of who? David. The son of David. Why would they ask that question? Is this the son of David? Because the son of David is supposed to be the Messiah. Those of us that's reading in the, the Bible in a year, we just read it today, that answer. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? Why, why would they be saying, is this the son of David? Because they know that the son of David is the Messiah who's supposed to be the king forever. Right. Right? He's the prophesied Messiah. Supposed to be the king forever, and it's supposed to heal, right? The prophecy says that he's supposed to heal, right? That all is supposed to come from somebody that comes from David. Keep going, watch this. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Right? The Pharisees are looking like, Man, he ain't casting out devils, you know what I'm saying, from God. He's casting out devils from the prince of the devils. Right. The reason, in other words, he's saying the reason why he has authority over the demons is because he's taking power from the, the, the lead demon, the ruler of the demons. So if the ruler of the demons is, 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 it has authority over the demons and he said, Hey, look, you could borrow my authority. Of course he would be able to cast out devils. That's how they looking at it. Like he casting out devils because he's using the authority of the ruler of all the devils. Right. Watch this. And Yahushua knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Mm -hmm. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I, by Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if so I in other words, what he's saying to them is, y'all, some of the people that are standing right here, you're going to end up having babies. He's talking to the Pharisees, right? And he's telling you, he's telling the Pharisees, he said, I'm, he's looking into the future and he's saying, some of y'all kids, some of y'all going to have kids that's going to be following my teachings and I'm going to give them the gifts to cast out demons. And when they do that, that's going to be the witness against you, right? So the Pharisees will hear that and they don't believe Yahushua right now. When they talk, looking at Yahushua right now, they're looking like... Man, this man is scamming our people. I don't know how he's doing all this voodoo and all this magic, but he can't be of God because of what he teaches. Right? That's the part I want y'all to understand. Y'all have to understand that had he been teaching something that was just like what Moses was teaching, the Pharisees wouldn't have had a problem with it. Right? The reason, part of the reason that the Pharisees have a problem with what he's teaching is because it's foreign to them. They looking like, Ain't never heard nobody talk like this and say this, right? You all right, boy? I ain't never had nobody talk like this and say all this, right? So he looking like, this is rough. Them people, they don't like that, right? They not into all that. So the Pharisees just looking like, man, you casting out demons by the demons, boy. Keep going, watch this. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man? And then he will spoil his house. Mm -hmm. He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me is scattered abroad. Right? He said, anybody who is not with me is against me. Pick a side. That's all Yahushua is talking about. There's no middle ground. If you are not with me, if you not running in this thing with me, if you not doing what I'm doing, you are against me. If you in the middle, you are against me. Right. And he said, anybody that what? Anybody that is not gathering with me is scattered abroad. You are either gathering with me or you're making a mess. That's what scattered abroad means. Right. When you abroad just mean that you, you know what I'm saying? You throwing it around. Well, so okay. you, you taking it, 
and you scattering the bra. You scattering that stuff all over the place, right? That means you're making a mess. So it's one of two things. You are either helping me or you are making a mess. And can I tell you, humbly, you know what I'm saying? A lot of these people that call themselves teachers, preachers, leaders, all this stuff, they are making a mess. They are making a fool out of themselves, a fool out of everybody who follow them. They are making a mess. They're not teaching the people nothing worth teaching. They're just making a mess. Right? And the most high God saying, man, y'all you, are against him. Y'all are against him. Right? Keep going. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Right? If you, when you curse the Holy Spirit, you know what I'm saying? You run your mouth and you curse the Holy Spirit. You blaspheme the Holy Spirit. He say that one won't be forgiven. Every other sin, you got it. But he said that one will not be forgiven. There's a lot of these people, they don't even realize it. And cur curse the Holy Spirit, playing around, doing all this. That's why you got to shut your darn mouth. Shut your mouth, darn mouth. You know what I'm saying? Shut your darn mouth. Say what you're supposed to say. Don't speak about stuff that you don't understand. You know what I'm saying? Don't get out there speaking about angels and speaking about spirits and speaking. About, you don't understand this stuff. Speak just as what the words say. You say that, it's safe. You playing with house money if you talk like the word. You teach like the word. You talk like the word. You playing with house money. You're not going to lose nothing. Right? You ain't going to lose nothing bad at least. Jump over uh, to uh, Mark chapter 4. Oh, sorry. No, let's keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Because he said, he said, uh, that ain't the end of the chapter. Go, keep going. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy, blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever mm -hmm. speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaks against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For I right? He's saying, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? Right? So he's saying, you're a generation of vipers. It don't make sense that good things are coming out of your mouth. In other words, he's saying, you want to know how I know you lying? Because you're a sinner. Right? Keep going. Watch this. O generation of vipers, how ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil mm -hmm. man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word... Hold on. Let's say that. Look. I want to I wanna stop there just for a second so we understand. He's telling you how it works. He says, out of the treasure of your heart comes forth what good things uh go back a little bit more out of the abundance of the heart heart is that what it is abundance of the heart out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks right so out of the abundance of the heart that's where your words come from so the way that you run your mouth the stuff that you slip up and say you know how you like let me tell you when i when i, I used to cuss a lot i oh my gracious like Cuss like a darn sailor, right? Cuss a lot, right? But after I got married and after I started reading the book, I said, you know what? I got to cut that out because I read it. I was reading and I was reading. Uh... Yeah, I read it in jail, but that ain't when I stopped cussing. But you know what I'm saying? Uh, a little bit after that, I read it again. And then I read, uh, I read, uh, it's probably like Galatians 5. Maybe, was it Galatians 5? It's Which one said? I think Galatians and, and Ephesians touch on it. I think it was Ephesians. Yeah, I think it's Ephesians. You know what I'm saying? I read Ephesians, and that thing said, you know what I'm saying? Don't have no filthy speech. And I was looking like, oh, because my mama used to always say, you running around with them filthy mouths. I was looking like, ooh. The book is telling me don't be cussing. But then I said it. I said, you know what? I'm going to stop cussing. And I used to go. Hang out with my boys. You know what I'm saying? Same boys I always hung out with. You know what I'm saying? We out there, city boys. It's that another. And next thing you know, guess what I'll start doing? Blanka, blanka, blank, blanka, blank, 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 blank,
cussed again. All right, next time I'm not I'm gonna come out here. I ain't gonna cuss. I used to try to hold that thing in. I get around, get too comfortable, blank, 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 and start cussing again. And it took a while. In fact, it took me saying, I ain't coming out no more. I'm going to just kick it. I'm going to, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to kick it at the house. I, don't, I can't be around y'all because clearly every time I'm around y'all, it just start coming out of me. And what's really happening is it was in the abundance of my heart, right? I had this stuff still in my heart and it was so much that once I got around some of the people that I'm used to being around, it just found its way out. That is how everything works. The behavior that you have, the thoughts that you have, that become actions or that become words, that is what is in your heart. You never going to grab a whole, whole we got right there. Go, uh, what is it, Jeremiah 17? Yeah. 17, 10? Nine. 17, 9. It's Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. What was the book set? Because we, uh, we get very confused, right, about, about how to judge stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like when we judge, we have to judge stuff properly. And sometimes we get very confused. We get to thinking that we understand more than what we really understand. The book is telling us this is how it works. Your behavior and your speech comes from the abundance of whatever is in your heart. So how do you know what's in your heart? Zahar? You know what's in your heart by your behavior. Because what, where does your behavior come from? Where does your speech come from? So if it come from your heart and you ain't a doctor and you can't see inside of your heart, then the only way to really know, even a doctor, right? A doctor, if you go into the doctor, right, and you holding your chest, right, just like that, ah, what is he going to ask you? Yeah, what's wrong? Where's your pain? You'll be like, clearly, I'm holding my chest. It's right here, right here in my chest. And then he's going to squeeze your arm because I think it's like, like pain that goes in a weird place, too. He's going to squeeze your arm and he's going to start looking at your behavior and how you're reacting to things. Then he's going to do what? He's going to wrap something on the outside of you and then check your blood pressure. What does that do? What is your blood? When they check your blood pressure, what does that do? What it does is it squeezes your arm, right, to see where your veins are, right? And then it, after it squeezes your arm and kind of like cuts off it and makes, you know what I'm saying, cuts off your circulation, now your blood, who, who has pressure, it keeps going through your body like this, the blood pushes back on the sensor. So then that sensor measures how much pressure your blood is putting back on that machine, and then it spits out a reading. So what is he doing? He's checking the behavior of your body. He's saying, OK, your blood is flowing well or your blood is not flowing well. That's how doctors do it. They check your behavior. So we have to be our own doctors when it comes to spiritual. We have a book, just like the doctors have a big a bunch of books that tell them, hey, when you see these signs, you can diagnose if a person coughs and they have green phlegm, that might be the flu. But if they have yellow phlegm, phlegm that might be strep throat or whatever right they look at these things and the behavior what comes out of a person they look at that and they say okay that means you are diagnosed with this disorder or this disease or this sickness or this illness or whatever right in the same way what comes out of us in terms of behavior the things we say the way we behave those are the things that define what's in our heart so what Yahushua is telling us is he's saying listen to me Whatever is in your heart, that's what comes out of you. So when you start seeing that you slipping up and cussing and when you start seeing that you out here doing stuff you're not supposed to do and you lying and you cheating and you defrauding and you killing and you stealing and committing adultery and, and fornication and all these different things, then that is what is in your heart. So when Yah says, believe on me from the heart, then you know with that behavior you don't believe on him from the heart because the person that believes on him from a heart does not have that behavior.
because their heart doesn't have that in there abundantly, right? This is what uh this is what uh Jeremiah chapter seventeen verse nine says. Watch this. The heart is deceitful above all things, and what does deceitful evil? mean? Mel, DJ, evil, deceitful. What does that mean? Freaking one. Deceitful mean you lying. It's like tricking people. Right? If if a person is deceitful, that means that they're lying. Right? So it's saying the heart is a liar, right? You ever say heard somebody say, Man, just follow your heart? What that mean then? If if the book say your heart be lying to you, and they say follow your heart, what that mean? But what it mean for them if they follow in their heart and the and the most high God is saying your heart be lying to you? They're getting tricked. Right? They're getting tricked. Y'all y'all ever y'all ever seen somebody say follow their heart and they get their heart broken? You ain't never seen that? You ain't never seen that? You gonna see it. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. You're going to see it. You're gonna see it quite a bit. You're gonna see it quite a bit. You know what I'm saying? As y'all grow, you're gonna have people just like, man, you know, sometimes you just gotta follow your heart. And as soon as they say it, just take out your phone, be like. July 12th. Jojo said, follow your heart. And he is trying to date Carissa. Just write it down. Mark it. I tell you, you could set the alarm on your phone for three months. That's all you need. If it don't happen by three months, call me. I'll give you a refund. You know what I'm talking about? Three months. That thing will happen. And 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 Jojo gonna be like. Telling you, bro, I gave her everything. Bro. I gave her everything. Let me tell you, when little boys be hurt, when they little heart be broken, <laughs> I loved her, bro. But I can't believe she did that to me, and that was my whole boy. Y'all, you know, they be messed up. The little boys. Let me tell you something, boy. That thing, that thing, that thing. How you hurt? You know what I'm saying? That thing. How you hurt? I wouldn't know nothing about that. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That thing how you hurt. You know what I'm saying? These girls, cause these girls are doing to you. You know what I'm saying? girls are hurt your little heart. You know what I'm saying? And then that's what happens, right? But it's because little Jojo followed his heart. Right? A lot of these young girls, that's all they do is follow their heart. They think they got intuition. They think that they don't know. They don't know what that is. I'm intuition. I am. I love wishing. You know what I'm saying? They don't know what they darn talking about, just running their darn mouth. And then they be like, but I think he likes me. No, I know everybody says that about him, but I think he's different with me. I think I can change him. Her name Jojo. Oh, I'm about to say, look, just pull it out. Just write it down. As soon as she says it, she don't say it one day, she's going to be like, you know, sometimes you just have to follow your heart, Mel. That's what I'm going to do, Mel. I'm just, I get it. I know you're telling me it's not a good idea, but I love him. And I just want to follow my heart, right? And so then you're going you're gonna, to boop, 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 write it down. You're going to be like, okay, Crystal is pulling her heart, just like Uncle Fillmore said. Said it for three months, right? And then follow up with me and just be like, you're right. It was two months and five days. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And uh, that thing was over. She was at the house. Mel, I don't know. I don't know if anything is going to work anymore. All guys are nothing. This was my last chance, and I tried it, and I can't believe he did this. That's what they're going to do, right? That's what they're going to do, because that's how they be crying. No, the girl, no, the girl be crying. Like, let me tell you how the girl be crying. Because they, like, oh. they, like they all got the eyelashes now. They're, and so they pat the bottom of their darn eye like that. Like that. Oh, no, nah, them little girls don't be toe up. But that's what happens when you follow your heart. You don't know nothing about no darn girl. You can cut that out, boy. Right? And so now you look at it and you say, this is why people follow their heart and end up in messed up situations. Because the heart lies to us. It is deceitful. Right? We don't really know what's in the heart. Watch what the books say. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Desperately wicked. That's how your heart is. 
And then the book says, who can know it? Who can know it? You ever heard somebody say, I know what's in my heart. I mean, I know I made a, made, may have made that mistake, but I wasn't trying to do that. I know what's in my heart. I know I'm a good person. Right? They get to talking like that. Y'all going to hear that one too. When you get it, just write it down. <laughs> they think they know what's in their heart. Six months. You know what I'm talking about? That was that. That one's six months. They're going to find out. I was wrong. I was wrong. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just don't know. You don't know what's in your heart. You don't know if you're a good person. Who feel like they're a good person? Yeah. Most people feel like they're a good person. Right? Most people feel like, you know what? I feel like a decent person, like a good person. I feel like I'm not evil. Who feels evil? Who would characterize themselves as evil? Who would say, you know what? I'm an evil person. Right? Most people wouldn't say they're an evil person. But guess what? You really don't know. Right? You have no idea. The only way you can know what's in your heart is by your behavior. Right? Keep going. Watch this. He said, the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Watch this. I, Yahuwah, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways. And according, according to his what? According to his ways. And according to the fruit of his doings. According to the fruit of his what? Doings. It all comes down to your behavior. This whole book, I don't care how you try to freaking see it. You know the Christians. We're going to get to it. But you know the Christians, they try to say, no, Paul says it's not by works. Right. Not by works. When we get to that, I'm going to light these Christian buzzer. We got a little while before we get there. I'm going to light they butt up with Paul. Because they don't read them. And right after he say that, not by works, he said, because the Most High God made us to be workmen. You know what I'm saying? Every time it comes down to behavior, that's all this whole book is about, is behavior. Not about any of the other imaginary stuff that these people put in y'all brains. Right? You don't know your heart. So the only way to know your heart is what, Zahar? Your behavior, right? You got to know it by your behavior. So now when Yahushua, let's go back. When Yahushua says, out of the abundance of your heart, right? That's how you speak, right? What he's saying is, when you get to run in your mouth and you say something, you be like, dang it, I didn't mean to say that. But it's a pattern. And you keep doing it and you can't stop yourself from doing it. Guess what? That means that's in your heart. You may not know it. You may not even believe it. Every time you get mad, you say some messed up stuff to somebody. And then you end up got, having to apologize. Like, you know what? I apologize. I really, I really didn't mean it. You know what I'm saying? It's just that when I get mad, I do that. Guess what that means? That is in your heart. If it's a pattern, that is in your heart. Right? That means we got to correct it. This is, uh, where are we at? Matthew chapter 12, what verse? 35. This is Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. What the book say? A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. And by he said, word. by thy words, thou shall be justified. What does that mean? Justified. Corrected, kind of, not really corrected. Not exactly. But justified means that you're going to be stamped as correct. Be right. Not necessarily corrected, but you're going to be stamped as right. So an example of that would be if I took mail to court, right? And I said, look. I did, look, I loaned Mel $20. I told Mel, pay me back on time. Mel didn't pay me back, but she asked me for another $20. I said, look, you haven't paid me back my first $20, but I'm going to pay you another $20. Now I need $40 on Friday when you get paid, right? Mel doesn't pay me the first $20 or the second $20. Mel owe me $40, right? So I take Mel to court and I say, Mel, you're in court. Mel get in front of the judge. She denied the whole thing. He's like, no, nah, he ain't never, he ain't never paid me. You paid me? I don't, I don't, I don't remember him paying me nothing, right? And she gets a line in front of the judge, right? Then at that point, I say, mm -mm -mm. 
I got text messages, emails, right? And this phone recording where I recorded her because we are in a one party state where I can record. I don't know if we really in a one party state, so don't quote me on that. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We are in a one party state in my mind. And so I recorded her, right? And I take all this evidence. And the judge says, well, Mel, what do you have to say about this evidence? And Mel just sit there quiet, right? Then the judge is going to slam that gavel and say, boom, ruled in favor of the plaintiff, right? Once that happens, that means the claim that I have has been justified. That means that justice is on my side, right? I'm right about whatever I said. So now what Yahushua is saying is that if you have words that are appropriate, your words will justify you. Where the most high God will look at you and be like, well done. Right? Well done. You are pleasing to me. You are considered righteous. Right? That would be justified by God. But your words can also do what? Watch this. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Now your word can also condemn you. What does condemn mean? It's your trouble. Condemn means that you're punished. Right. So when we talk about people burning forever, that's condemnation. Right. So he's telling you your words can either justify you. Or bring you into condemnation, if you justify by God, what does that mean? Right. What does that mean in the end? Going to the kingdom, that's absolutely right. Right. If you justified in the end, that means you're getting to the kingdom. But if you are condemned in the end, what that mean? Yeah, but where are you going? You're going to the fire. You're going to hell. You're going to burn forever. Hell is called death. That's called the second death, right? Just the justification is called the resurrection, right? Or the second life, right? Those two are the options. A lot of people, Yahushua also says in another place, uh, and, and the Proverbs say it as well, it says, um, life and death is by the tongue. And a lot of people think, oh, you can speak life into a situation or you can speak death into a situation. But it's like, no, that's not what this is saying. This is saying the things that you say can get you killed or it can get you resurrected. Right. Your words can bring life to you or bring death to you. And it's not about you repeating affirmations to yourself in the mirror. Right. That's not what it's not hocus pocus. It's about saying things that line up with the book of the most high God. That's the only affirmation that counts. The rest of the stuff you telling yourself lies, you just lying to yourself. That's your heart talking. You're being deceitful. Right. But if you look, if you look in the mirror and say, I'm a serve the word of the most high God. And then you walk outside and do what the word of the most high God say. That's a that's a worth. Well, that's a worthwhile affirmation. Right. You look in the mirror and say, I'm a serve the word of the most high God then walk out there and sin. Then what does it matter what you just said to yourself in the mirror? You can repeat it 30 times. That don't change what your behavior was. At the end of the day, your behavior has to change. Keep going. Watch this. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we will see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And there shall no sign be given it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise so, in judgment. Right? He said, he told them, you wicked and evil people won't get a sign. Because they asked him for a sign. It's like, okay, you think you bad? All right, you kind of sounding like you might be somebody. Well, show us a sign then. And he looked at him. He already called them vipers. So he looked at him. He said, an evil and adulterous generation ain't going to get no sign from me. All right? Except for the sign of Jonah. He's at three nights and three, you know what I'm saying? Three, three days and three nights in the heart of the uh, belly of the whale. You know what I'm saying? That's what y'all going to get. All right? And that's exactly what happened with Jonah. All right? Keep going. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the ut uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. 
When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he finds it empty, swept and garnished. Then he goes and and talk and takes wait, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter into the they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so right. is he unto this wicked generation. Yeah. Right. So he's saying he's saying, listen, a person to mess around and get rid. They have one evil spirit in them. Right. That's 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 influencing them to sin. And they'd be sending away. And they say, you know what? I got to get rid of this. And they stop sinning. And then the evil spirit go. The evil spirit go and then go find seven other evil spirits and they come back to them. And be like, man, it's mighty clean in there. You know what I'm saying? Since I left here, it's mighty clean and come back. And then they say the man is worse than he was at the first because at first he only had one evil spirit. Now the man got darn eight evil spirits. Right? And he's saying that's how this wicked generation is. I want y'all to understand how we see this exact same thing in regular life. Right? You ever seen somebody lose a whole lot of weight? Just lose it. I mean, just drop. And then all of a sudden, they go back to the same habits that they had before. And then they get bigger than they were when they lost the weight. And guess what? It's harder to get rid of the weight at that point. Right? You will. There's a lot. Look, there's a lot of stuff I'm saying to y'all. <laughs> you, you will. You haven't seen it yet. We'll see it. You know what I'm saying? You will see it many times throughout your life, hush boy. You will see it many times throughout your darn life. You know what I'm saying? It just that is just natural. I can give you one person right now. Um, right now, you know they got all the good medication. They got the good medication now. You know what I'm talking about? All the, look, you see every celebrity. What's her name? What's the white girl name? She married to the to the to the bas the basketball agent. Uh, oh, I did. Uh, What's her name? Adele. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adele. Look, when you first met Adele, what she looked like? No offense to Adele. We love you. But what she looked like when we first met her? Our house. Right? But then, after that, you look at her now, slim and thin. Boy, you know what I'm talking about? Because, look, there's some medication out there that'll do I don't know if I don't ain't in her business, but medication. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it'd be medication. I'll give you another one. Rick Ross. We first met Rick Ross. A tank. You know what I'm talking about? Then what happened? Now you look at Rick Ross and, you know what I'm saying, a Hummer. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Now it's, you know what I'm saying? The SUV. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? It slimmed down just a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? And so you look at it, this medication to get it done. But then let's look in the example of somebody who didn't necessarily keep up with Buster Rhymes. <laughs> Bro, I ain't seen a picture of Buster Rhymes in forever. Rhymes. I mean, in a matter of a year. Went from, you know what I'm saying? Buster Rhymes used to be, huh? Then, uh, then, uh, right? All right? You right? And then after, huh? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Real quick. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, you probably stopped taking a shot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Still in, but yeah. pot belly. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you gotta look at it and be like, gotta keep taking the shot. You know what I'm saying? You gotta keep taking the shot. Otherwise, you got one demon that you got rid of, and it's gonna go get seven more. And what it say about the man after he gets seven more? And then he goes and take taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so, he's worse off in the end than he was in the beginning, what the book's saying. Keep going. So shall it be also unto this wicked generation. While he, yet talk, while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brother stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then right? Yet, so his mama, look, he talking to the people, he teaching. Like, yeah, so let me tell y'all, look, you mess around, lose a spirit. If you don't take care of yourself and you go back to your old habits, it's going to be worse for you than it was in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? He finishing up his sentence and his mom's over there. Uh, y'all sure? Y'all sure? Then his sister right there. He like, they say his mom and his sister? Brother. Oh, mom and his brother. His brother was like, uh, y'all sure? Mama calling. Yeah, she called. Y'all, I know, boy, I know you hear me calling you. 
Y'all sure, but he talking, he like, and I'll tell you another thing. If y'all, and he listening to him, he looking like he trying to ignore him because he in the middle of teaching. And mom's just calling him. And his brother calling like, y'all sure, you hear mama calling you. Keep trying to talk to you real quick, right? And he teaching. So what would a normal person do? You see, you learning from somebody, but you see his mama. Like, you respect him. And that's his mama, right? So it's like, oh, that's his mama. So if he don't hear his mama, but you see his mama call him, what you going to do? He'd be like, hey, man, yo, you don't hear your mama. Your mama call him. Watch what they did. Then one said unto him, behold, thy mother and thy brother and stand without desiring to speak with thee. Hey, he hey, I don't know if you heard him. They calling you over there. They standing there desiring to speak with you. What do you think y'all sure going to say back? Watch this. But he answered and said unto him that told him, who is my mother and who are my brother? Who is my mother and who are my brothers? Watch this. And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, behold, my mother. Then he looked at all his boys, everybody who's standing there learning this word with him. Guess what he said? He stretched out his hand and said, what's this? Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother. Right? I don't have time. Right? What he's saying is, I'm so focused on the word of God. Look, you are my brother and my mother and my sister if you standing here doing my word. In other words, what he's trying to tell you is, y'all are the only family that matter, the ones that's sitting here learning the word with me. Everything else comes second. And that's his mama. That's his brother that's calling him like, yo, yo, yo. If you don't recognize that I'm teaching the word of the most high God and you don't see how important this is and put whatever you got to talk to me about second, then guess what? These are my mothers, my brothers and my sisters right here. And that's exactly what he taught. That's the focus that we need. Everybody be talking to y'all, talking about y'all sure like, oh, look, he's just a, so sweet and compassionate. And he was right. He is. But. Most people wouldn't see this as compassion. Most people would see this and be like, you disrespecting your mama. Boy. You hear her calling you. That's not true. Right? He's honoring his father is what he's doing. Right? We all have to see that when we see the word being taught, when we see, when we see something important, the only thing that's really important in this, word, in this world is this word. And when we see that, everything should come second. Everything else in our life, everything else should come second. When you honor God to that level, most I got to work for you, right? We halfway honor God. We halfway do stuff. We put it. We try to look for any excuse to put something above God. You got to resist that stuff. That stuff is a trap because you do it once you get used to it. Do it again. You get used to it. And you find yourself 10 years down the line. Don't even know how you got to where you got. Right? Because it's a trap. I'm telling you, I've been there. It's a trap. You put the most high God first and just, just test yourself. Look at everything as a test. Anytime you get that urge to be like, oh, well, that's not important. Make God the most important thing. Just see how it work out for you. Keep going. Watch this. That's the end of the chapter. That's the end. Uh, go to... Uh, that's the end of chapter 12? Yeah. Go to... Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, where do we want to go? I don't know if we got enough time to go where I want to go. I want to get to Matthew chapter 13, but it's so much. Okay, well, let's wrap right there. We'll get to Matthew chapter 13 next week, right? We'll talk about Matthew chapter 13 and the parables. Um, and we'll kind of look at, you know, and how, how, uh, Yahushua spoke to different types of people, right? You're going to learn a little bit about Christians next week. Anybody heard a Christian? You know what a Christian is? You know what a Christian is? What's, what's a Christian? Why are you out of breath laying down? That's crazy to me. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with your kid. What's a Christian? Pretty much. He said somebody who go to churches and believes them and wears crosses on their neck. <laughs> I'm saying it's pretty. You know what I'm saying?
appropriate to me. You know what I'm saying? It's a pretty fair description if you ask me. All right. Uh, so we're gonna learn a little more, a little more about Christians um, and uh, the concept of Christianity. Uh, we're gonna learn about parables, and we're gonna learn about what we are called to be. Right? We are called to be. Are we called to be Christians, or are we called to be something else? What are we called to be? Hebrews, disciples. I told you she was the only one that got sent. Didn't I tell you that? I told you she is the only one that got sent. He said Hebrews. You sitting there, you uh, you ain't here, right? But Mel, right off the bat, she ain't waste no time. Disciples, we supposed to be disciples. DJ, I'm just telling. I'm t didn't I downstairs? Didn't I tell you she the only one that got sent? Listen, didn't I tell you last night? I mean, this earlier today that she the only one that got sent. That's all I'm saying, man. Any questions? Do y'all got any questions? It's a whole, it's big hate. It's big hate. Big, big male hate around here. It's big male hate. Look at this. You got the little boy and the bigger little boy. That's what you're talking about. There's a whole bunch of male hate. It's a male hate sandwich going on right now. Goodness gracious. No questions, no questions. Y'all starting to fight in my house right now. All right, well, let's pray out. <laughs>